Chapter 25 The vehicle's belly vibrated beneath his boots, and low booming sounds echoed through the metal. The submersible twitched, and Zilf felt gravity shift beneath his feet. They were descending. Through the bow's thick glass canopy, Zilf watched as the room disappeared upward, replaced by metal beams. Once the room fell completely out of sight, a metal door slid closed above them. Entering Ocean flashed on the hollow display. Demotier groaned or sobbed at the message. Zilf wasn't sure which. Another grinding sound followed by a bump. The vehicle swayed sideways and red water washed over the canopy. It took a moment for them to leave the underwater bay, the vehicle autopiloting itself from its berth and descending out of its way. Then, finally, Zilf saw Zhao Tu's deep ocean. Bright red, clear, and far from lifeless. The vehicle's powerful, narrowly focused lights didn't show him much, but he saw objects moving in the shadows beyond. The amorphous shapes could have been anything, pieces of debris from the refinery perhaps, but Zilf knew better. Sure enough, one of the shapes darted away from the lights, as though in fear. He turned to regard to Motier. This ocean is alive? The frightened man blinked lazily at him. Alive? What do you mean? Are there animals in it? Fish? The fuck should I know? Demotier said. First time I've been in this ocean and they sure as shit didn't tell us about it. Zilf nodded and turned back to the canopy. A large shape moved in the darkness and after a moment, Zilf realized it was following them. Following? Chasing? Hunting? Not a good thought to have. This was supposed to be a dead world. Should be a dead world. Shen Shou wasn't supposed to be mucking around on a planet that had indigenous life. Maybe they don't even know, he muttered. What? the Motier asked. Nothing, Zilf said. You said you're a systems engineer? Standard infrastructure? Demotier looked surprised at the question, but the change in his body language suggested he welcomed the distraction. Yes, help to manage and repair the quantum computers and QE comms. He paused for a beat. Not that it helped much. Demotier pointed behind Zilf. What is that? Zilf turned and stared out the canopy, the man's question obvious. The submersible had turned away from Station 2, or what remained of it, and dove at a gradual angle. A structure lit with greens and yellows had appeared far below them. According to the navigation display, they were still some four kilometers away from Station 3. He saw a string of lights leading far out of sight toward the surface and grinned. Station 3 had an elevator tube rising from its top like a straw. It still had power, meaning there might be a way to get to the surface in the orbital in space. Might he reminded himself. I assume that's Station 3, Zilf said, all lit up and a beautiful sight. Shit, is that another elevator? Demotier asked. You didn't know Station 3 had one? Zilf found that hard to believe. The man shook his head. No, does it connect to another orbital? Yes, Zilf said, but my ship's not there. Demotier shivered. I don't care about that. Get me to the dock in the elevator, the man said. Won't bother you after that. Zilf nodded. If I can, I will. I have a few things to take care of first. Like what? Nemotier asked incredulously. In case you didn't fucking know, everyone is dead. Dead! They're those things now. There is no one to rescue. Zilf considered that. From Nemotier's point of view, that was certainly true. But Griggs was missing, and he and Harvey had headed to Station 3. Before destroying the station, Zilf intended to find his EET squad mate. I have orders, Zilf said. No point in trying to explain things to Demotier. It was pretty clear he wasn't going to be persuaded regardless. As I said, I'll do what I can. It's what I'm here for. Demotier rubbed at his arms, multicolored crumbs falling away from the fabric. Here for, right, he said. E-E-T. E-E-T, Zilf echoed. The two men remained silent as the vehicle descended further into the depths. Station 3's lights appeared to flash, but Zilf knew better. Creatures swam in the darkness, occasionally blocking the lights and making them appear to blink. From this distance, still nearly three kilometers away, the creatures could be swimming near the station or merely around the submersible. Impossible to tell which. Something thudded against the sub's belly, but the vehicle didn't so much as shudder. Still, both he and Demotier flinched and stared at one another. Neither said what they were thinking, but they didn't have to. There was no way to see what had hit them, and it could have been anything. Still, Zilf's imagination provided him the image of one of those jumping creatures that had attacked them, only much larger, its belly packed with paddle-like appendages instead of insectile legs. 
Another thump, this one from port, and the submersible tilted starboard for an instant. Demotier squeaked and grabbed his restraints tightly, eyes clenched shut. Zilf stepped as close as he could to the canopy and did his vision trick, focusing on nothing and everything at once. Shadows moved, and now that they were closer to the station, he began to get some perspective on their possible size. The creatures out there gliding through the pitch-black ocean had to be at least the size of the submersible itself, perhaps larger. He wasn't sure he wanted to know just how large they might be. Still, what would it be like to stop the sub, pop the hatch, and swim in that ocean? What about diving to the bottom and seeing all the fauna, all the flora, all of it? Suicide, he knew, but some part of himself still considered it, maybe even desired it. If Reki heard him say something like that, she'd immediately send him to a brain trauma center. His father, on the other hand, would have understood all too well. The exploration of the unknown had been the old man's passion, apart from Persian myth and cultural history. But even that was venturing into the unknown, taking oneself from ignorance to knowledge while putting aside preconceptions and judgments. Zilf smiled sadly. The chances of him ever seeing the old man again were shrinking by the second. Once they reached Station 3, he'd find out just how minuscule they actually were. Something bumped the aft and Demotier screamed. The sub tried to roll, the motors whining as the automated routines attempted to keep the sub upright. The sub shifted, and Zilf knew it had increased its speed. Two kilometers to go. Station 3 wasn't as large as Station 2 had been, but since the sub's descent had flattened out, it was easy to see that Station 3 consisted of dozens of modules, maybe as many as Station 1, although this structure appeared to have maybe double the number of levels. Something the size of a human child swam by the canopy, its features flashing for an instant before disappearing. He hadn't been able to make out more than what looked like fins and some kind of tail. It was the first indigenous life form he'd seen, and it had swum back into the shadows before he had a decent look. He sighed. You're an idiot, he told himself. You do not want to meet what's out there. Those big things will probably just swallow you. Wouldn't that be an interesting way to die? In the gullet of an alien beast kilometers beneath a layer of ice a quarter kilometer thick. The vehicle adjusted its course to starboard, and now Zil saw they were heading to a module several levels below the elevator level. Unless, like Stations 1 and 2, the elevator went all the way through the structure. Going to have a bit of a walk, he said to himself. Modules upon modules upon modules. And this far away from Station 2? How had people from Station 3 even managed to get to Station 2? Harvey said there was an umbilical connecting the stations. Was it still there? Or had the refinery implosion destroyed it? 500 meters. Self made out a large slot in the modules where a single guide light flashed green like a silent heartbeat. The rest of the light arrays he could see in its glow had gone dark. Great. Partial power at best. Nearly there, he said to Demotier. I don't suppose you know a man named Harvey? He's a doctor on Station 1? Demotier blinked at him. Harvey? Short, bald, compact build? No, Demotier said. Doesn't sound like anyone I know, unless he's the guy that left the umbilical before all hell broke loose. Impossible to tell what someone looks like when they're wearing a hazmat suit. Zilf raised an eyebrow. Hazmat suit? Demotier nodded. One of the medical ones. Green. The alarms activated after he entered the dock. What happened then? Zilf asked. Demotier scrunched up his face in frustration, but his eyes held terror. What do you think happened? Everyone scrambled for Station 3 after getting into their suits. Station-wide alert. All refinery workers to assist Station 3 to keep it from imploding. Zilf nodded to himself. That made sense. Also meant that Harvey, if it was Harvey, had originally been in Station 3 for some reason. Don't trust Harvey, Reggie had said. No worries there. Zilf would likely kill the man if he found him, but not before he got answers, damn it. He said to Demotier, why didn't you go to Station 3? Demotier blinked at him. Someone had to stay behind and monitor infrastructure. There were a dozen of us that remained to keep the refinery going. That also made sense. Otherwise, Demotier would just be another thing wandering around the station looking for its next meal. That wrecking bar the only weapon you have? The man nodded. As soon as we dock, Zilf said, get it. You might need it. Might? The man chuckled maniacally. Have you seen those things? I have. Zilf said, one killed my partner. Demotier's mouth froze in an open O for a moment. 
When he finally spoke, his pale cheeks had flushed red. I'm sorry. So am I, Zilf said. Demotier waited for him to say something else, but Zilf had already turned away to stare out the canopy. A framework of metal supports and other infrastructure secured the station to a massive cliff. Station 3 had been placed specifically at this spot. It could just as easily have been placed below Station 2. There was plenty of space for it. But Shin Sho or whomever had built the station had chosen this cliff. What was special about this location? 100 meters from Station 3, the vehicle dock opened upward, revealing a mouth of darkness. Zilf gritted his teeth. The damned station was lit, so why not the dock? And why were the guide lights out? Yuri, always in the mood to find a good saboteur scenario, would have jumped at the idea that someone inside Station 3 had cut the lights to keep personnel from reaching it. Considering everything Zilf had seen in the past few hours, he wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility. Was Harvey the one that had sabotaged the lights? Had he also sabotaged Station 2? Who the fuck was he? And why hadn't the other personnel given Reki a warning if that was the case? Secrecy, perhaps? With Shen Shou, you spoke with no one outside your team about anything. An errant thought spoken aloud in public could end your career, or the lawyers might take you to court for violating your most secret clearance contracts. Who are you, Harvey? Zulf asked, his external speakers off. Fifty meters. The sub's lights stabbed into the yawning mouth of the vehicle dock, dispelling shadows while creating more. Get ready, Zulf said to Timotier. Once we dock, you're going to stay in here while I clear. Do not come out unless I tell you to, but keep that wrecking bar handy. Demotier nodded but said nothing. His skin had paled to near white, hands clutching the restraints as though they were all that kept him from sliding into an unseen abyss. Or maybe he was thinking about the kilometers of water below them. The sub slowed as it neared the dock, and now he could see the other escape vehicle already moored in a slot near the far bulkhead. It was above them, which made sense. The sub neared one of the translucent coffins and slid inside. The vehicle shuddered as metal arms clamped against its sides and pulled it into a docking position. Demotier moaned at the sound. Zilf wanted to tell him to calm down, but what was the point? The engineer had no suit, no weapons, apart from a relatively useless wrecking bar, and he watched his co-workers eaten alive. What could be said? Zilf shivered despite himself. He knew he was filtering his own fears through Demotier's, desperately trying to discount them, yet he was fooling himself. Even while wearing an armored EET suit, Zilp was terrified. The arms holding the sub in place lifted and the red water rolled off the canopy. Once the arms lifted the sub out of the water, a panel slid closed beneath them and the upper panel slid aside. They had reached the dock. The sub shuddered once more and then went still, the motors cutting off and the hollow display flashing the words Station 3 in bright red. Once sure the sub was secured, Zilf deactivated his mag boots and connected to the interface. Query? Station 3 schematic, he typed. No such file exists, the interface immediately responded. Zilf growled low in his throat. Figured. Wait, Demotier said. You don't have a schematic? Zilf turned to the man, his mirrored visor making his face impossible to see. I don't have any schematics. It was a shot in the dark. Demotier's skin flicked from pale to bright red instantaneously. What the fuck good are you if you don't know where you're going? It would be so easy, Zilf thought, to crush the man's windpipe and stop his endless whining with a simple flex of the fist. Yes, he could do that, and it might make him feel better for a moment or two, but he regretted for as long as he had left to live. Which, based on his plasma reserves and the fact Station 3 was probably filled with creatures, would no doubt be short. Zilf walked to the hatch. Stay here he said again, but be ready, we may need to move fast. Demotier unfastened his restraints, the buckles clanking against one another. He shuffled off the seat, grabbed the wrecking bar, and clutched it in both hands like a sword. The piece of metal shook in his terrified fingers. What are you going to do? the man asked. Sylph swished from his stunner back to the plasma torch, the pilot teardrop coming to life. Clear the area. Close the hatch behind me. Rather than waiting for Demotier to respond, Zilf touched the hatch release and it opened into the pitch black dock. Chapter 26 The moment he stepped through the hatch, he heard the sounds of Demotier scrambling to the hatch controls. The metal door slid shut behind Zilf and he found himself alone in the dock. Zilf activated all of his suit lights and blazed like a torch in the middle of the room. 
The dock bulkheads appeared clean of green goo, blood, and brownish sludge. The deck, too, was clean. That was something, at least. The vehicle pier led to the rear of the dock and another five piers. Ignoring the others, Zilf walked down to the pier to the only other vehicle in the dock. Sure enough, its markings confirmed it had come from Station 2. Zilf walked to the hatch, touched it with his glove, and it opened silently on an empty cabin. With the exception of grime tracked in from the station, the vehicle had no signs of the creatures, nor any sign that Griggs or Harvey had ever been inside. Where are you, Griggs? Zilf asked the empty cabin. Grind. Boom. Grind. Boom. Zilf flinched before stepping back from the cabin and looking up. Plasma torch pointed in that direction. The sound, and whatever had made it, was directly above him. No vents in here. He didn't have to worry about the things coming through the ceiling and dropping on him, but that didn't mean there weren't infrastructure pipes or a maintenance tunnel between this level and the one above. He touched the stud to close the hatch and backtracked to the pier gantry. The hatch separating the dock from the rest of the station appeared secured, but it looked quite different from the ones on the other stations. He'd never seen anything quite like it. The rectangular hatch had more than enough room to ferry supplies inside the station, as well as accommodate multiple personnel at once. What's more, a transparent security shield in front of the hatch functioned as an airlock, he guessed. He'd have to crack both to get he and Demotier inside. He scanned the giant room once more, pouring his lights over every surface looking for telltale signs of the creatures. None. Boom. Rind. Boom. He ignored the sounds and headed back to the sub with Demotier still inside. As he approached the vehicle, he saw the man's terrified face stuck to the glass, furtive eyes locking with Zilf's helmet. Zilf reached the hatch and gestured for Demotier to step back. He didn't comply. Zilf placed a glove against the sub's metal skin and activated the sonics. Open the hatch. It's safe, he said. Despite the fact the sub was airtight, his words vibrated from his glove through the steel and into the cabin. Demotier didn't react, but Zilf knew the man had hurt him. He tried again, but Demotier ignored him. Then stay and die, Zilf said, and turned away from the sub. He made it five meters before he heard the hatch pop and heavy breathing behind him. Wait! The man practically screamed. Zilf halted, but didn't turn. He activated his rear cam and watched Demotier jogging to reach him, the wrecking bar practically dragging the deck. Decided to join me? Zilf asked. Demotier reached Zilf's side, panting with exertion. Zilf glanced at him and saw the man's skin looked odd. He'd been pale, true, but he'd at least had some color. Now he was little more than blanched white, although a mottled patch of brown had appeared on his left cheek. Take me, the terrified man said. Get me safe. You going to follow orders? Zilf asked, voice calm and even. Yes, the man squeaked. Follow orders. Zilf nodded. Then stay close behind me and wait for me to open the hatch. We don't know what's on the other side, so be prepared to run back to the sub. Demotier said nothing, but Zilf watched him nod through his left side cam. That would have to be good enough. Zilf walked to the airlock bubble and touched the stud. A small hollow display appeared. Security token? Token? Zilf attempted to connect to the interface, but it refused him. Confused, he tried his hacks to trick the system into opening. Each time it refused to acknowledge the connection. The screen then winked out. Zilf tapped a stud again, but nothing happened. Security lockout. Too many failed attempts and the system had finally told him to go fuck himself. This is going to be loud, he said over the external speakers. Demotier had time to say, what? Before Zilf swung his wrench into the bubble. The heavy glass spider webbed, small chunks tinkling to the floor. Zilf reared back again and swung harder. The wrench smashed into the weakened glass and elicited an explosion of shrapnel. Demotier screamed behind him, but Zilf ignored the man. The irregular hole in the bubble was almost large enough for an unsuited human, but not enough space for Zilf. Fine by him. He pulled back a foot and kicked, pretending he was destroying the creature that had killed his friend. Another kick, a swing of the wrench, an inhuman scream welling up from his core that needed to be vented, must be vented. When he came to his senses and had spent his spleen on the bubble, it was little more than a cracked, useless skirt of spider-webbed material draping the deck. Zulf checked his rear cam and saw Demotier behind him, the man shaking harder than ever. You wounded? Zulf asked without turning around. No, the man said and giggled. That was loud. Told you, Zulf said, and walked through the remains of the bubble into the hatch. 
It was locked from within the station. He attempted another connection, but the interface refused him. Now he'd really pissed off the system. Zilf activated his x-ray tool and scanned the hatch. A half meter thick, same with the bulkhead. There was no way they were getting through the hatch without a plasma torch refill. Maybe two of them. He sighed and looked down at the deck. Coded. Can't get through? Demotier asked. He was rubbing at his arms as if cold, the wrecking bar jumping in his hand. Zilf stomped on the deck and felt it give slightly. He grinned. We'll get through, he said and knelt in front of the hatch. Sometimes you just have to go around security rather than breaking through it. Demotier watched as Zilf activated the torch and cut a rough 2 by 2 meter square in front of the hatch. Zilf didn't bother cutting all the way through. Not enough precious fuel to waste. Even with such a shallow cut, he was down to 12% fuel. He'd fired far too many plasma blasts back in Station 2, and now he was paying the price. He stepped away from the square, lifted one foot, and stomped out a corner of the cut. The deck vibrated and a metal crunch echoed through the room. The corner had given way, exposing a maintenance crawl space. He kicked at the other corner and the partially cut portion of the deck fell inward. Kneeling, he reached a glove beneath the cup plate, clenched his fingers around the material, and pulled while standing up at the same time. The metal slab groaned and complained as he lifted it, the steel barely holding together at the other cuts he'd made. One savage twist, and the piece peeled upward. Zilf continued pushing forward beside the growing gap until the piece reached the hatch. It finally snapped completely, and Zilf tossed it aside where it crashed to the deck, making Demotier yelp again. Zilf knelt and shined his suit lights into the exposed area near the hatch and grinned. This will take a minute, he said, and dropped into the space. He crawled as far forward as he could and found the hatch edge which dipped down a full two centimeters below the deck. Zilf explored the area and found what he was looking for, the interface between the door lock and the security system. He pinched a forefinger and thumb on the chip and sent a hard magnetic pulse from his glove. Zilf caught the sound of a nearly inaudible click, his grin widening. Security, he thought, and not for the first time, was only as good as the infrastructure around it. Whomever designed the station had seemingly thought of everything except for what a competent EET could do. He sent another pulse through the system just to make sure he'd killed the lockout and rose from the gap in the deck. Demotier stood a few meters away, apparently unsure if Zilf was going to start tossing things again. Once Zilf pulled himself out of the gap, he walked to the hatch stud and tapped it. Air hissed between the cracks and a white fog briefly spilled into the room. His suit's external thermometer read 5 degrees Celsius. Demotier was going to get cold fairly quickly. His jumpsuit might be warm, but it hadn't been designed for long stints in frigid air. Zilf would have to be on the lookout for more clothes or something else the man could wear. Another suit would be best, but he doubted they'd get that lucky. Ready? Zilf asked without turning. Demotier sounded almost manic. Sure, sure. It's cold, though. I know, Zilf said. Can't do shit about that right now. Keep up with me and stay close. If you can't, sing out. Especially if you see something moving. Moving, Demotier stammered, his voice already trembling from the cold. Right. Something moves. Yell. Zulf nodded. This guy was getting on his nerves and protecting him was going to make the job that much more difficult. Griggs was here somewhere and, damn it, Zilf was going to find him. Then Zilf was going to find Harvey and before killing the man, he'd find out what the hell happened here. Are you going to kill Stefan too? You have orders. He ignored the mental voice that sounded so much like Reggie's. He pushed on the hatch and it swung open on silent hinges before an alarm blared. Cursing, Zilf stepped through and looked upward. A klaxon attached to the top of the hatch screamed at him. He smashed the alarm with a casual flip of his wrench and it died with a digital squawk. A camera bubble glowed red on the nearest bulkhead. The lens aimed directly at him. Zilf ignored it and cleared the brightly lit corridor. Four meters wide, at least 100 meters long, rectangular, and vents and lights spaced every three or four meters. Most of the vents were open. Green and brownish gunk covered the bulkheads, ceiling, and deck. The crap almost looked like moss or mold or some other runaway plant. Zilf had seen caves covered in similar flora. He walked to the bulkhead and touched a finger to the muck, and tendrils of the stuff began twining around his armor. He stepped back, plasma torch aimed at the bulkhead. 
The tendrils reached out for half a centimeter, waving as if searching for a target, before slowly pulling back and retreating into the tangle of alien plants, or whatever they were. Stay away from the bulkheads, Zilf said dumbly. Why? Demotier said with a lung-rattling cough. Because I said so. Zilf delivered each word emphatically, but said nothing more. The idea the walls could eat them wouldn't make Demotier any calmer. Zilf looked down to see if the muck was trying to grab his feet, but it wasn't. The stuff on the deck seemed dead, or maybe nascent was the right word. Ten meters away, he spied a hatch on either side of the bulkhead, an open vent between them. There might be luma paint on the bulkheads indicating different destinations, but with the alien growth, it was impossible to tell. Fucking schematics, Recky, he thought. Why couldn't you have given me schematics? Close the hatch behind you and don't move, he said to Demotier. Don't move? Instead of repeating himself, Zilf walked down the corridor.